All right, what's up, guys? So today is Monday. Uh, today is a losing day for me. It has been a very long time since I had a losing day, so I kind of want to talk about what happened, what my mindset was, and what I'm going to kind of do to improve, right? So first things first is what happened on EYES. So if you look at the chart on Friday, on Friday uh, towards 3.30 uh, in the afternoon, they pushed the stock up towards $9.00. And they just dumped it from nine all the way to five bucks, right? So any person that was long lost towards the end of the day on eyes because the stock tanked, okay? Every single short got bailed out. I saw people on Twitter and Instagram posting, I'm the best. I made 100 grand on eyes. I made 200 grand on eyes. I'm the best. But they don't show the part where they're down half a million dollars on the way up, right? So... When I was tanked on Friday, even I thought that the trade was over. I thought that there's no way in hell this stock is going to rebound because it went all the way from $9 to $5. It tanked almost 50% in like 30 minutes, right? And that to me is a signal that the stock is over, right? And okay, if the stock is over and the stock tanks on Friday, obviously it becomes a low-hanging fruit on Monday if the stock bounces. So a stock tanks on Friday, it tanks down, we're looking for a dead cat bounce to short, right? This is a setup that works 95, 99% of the time, right? But this is the time that it didn't work out. And let me tell you why it didn't work out. So this morning, I woke up and eyes was at $8, right? So remember, it closed yesterday, it closed Friday at $5. It went from 9 to 5, okay? 9 to 5. And today, pre-market, it's at 8. So logically, in my head, I go back to the chart, and I remember that Bao said, if this bounces towards the $8 line in the morning, that's going to be a great opportunity. It just so happened that that $8 line hit pre-market, and it's early. It's like 6.30 in the morning. Usually, not really many people are awake, so I shorted at $8, and I covered it at like $7.20 and 7 bucks. So I made uh, like $1,000 in the morning, nothing, nothing too crazy, and I thought in my head, okay, it works. The stock was broken on Friday. The stock rebounded to a whole dollar, $8. Uh, and I shorted at $8 and it went down without a fight. So I'm thinking in my head, okay, if this stock rebounds again towards that $8 line, you know, chances are it's probably going to reject that line. And if not, I could scale to $8.50 and I could scale to $9, which is where it rejected yesterday. So I made a plan. My plan was short at 8 short at $8.50, and short at $9. Now, what I didn't anticipate that was going to happen was the abnormal amounts of volume in the stock today. So what you have to think of volume-wise on stocks is how much demand there is. If there is high volume on a stock, that means that there is high demand on a stock. You know, a stock like Eyes that traded 700 million shares of volume on Friday is a high-demand stock. Right, even though it tanked, even though it tanked at the close, it still has people's attention. Now, what happened today? So all of a sudden, it goes from eight dollars pre-market, and then it goes down to uh, seven dollars pre-market. It kind of consolidates and finds its way back up to seven fifty, finds its way back up to eight dollars, and now it's at eight fifty, and now it's at nine. So all of a sudden, this stock that was at five dollars yesterday is now at $9 today and all of the shorts that are stuck from the day before are now stuck even more. Now, I have a rule on these stocks, guys. This rule has kind of saved me plenty of times. And it is if a stock breaks above the previous day's high, it is no longer a short and you should be looking at it for a law. So Friday, the high of the day, was $10 on eyes, right? So $10 was the high of the day on eyes. And today, pre-market, it was at eight eight fifty nine. Logically, what this tells me in my head is that, okay, if this stock breaks above $10, which is Friday's high, the shorts from Friday, the shorts from today are all going to be stuck. The longs are going to want to buy for that breakout higher. And then we have a domino effect of the stock going higher. So I kind of recognize that in my head, but for whatever reason, I just really didn't even go along the stock. It's, you know, that's the problem that I have, guys, is 
I'm very uh, short centric, meaning I do very well on the short side. And oftentimes I forget that I could buy these stocks too. So in my head, I kind of recognize that, you know, eyes was not a short above $10 Friday's high. And then what happened uh, at the open is that the stock ramped up to $11, tanked all the way back down to $9. And now I'm thinking in my head, okay, uh, it just showed us that the top is set. It just showed us that maybe that was the exhaustion move. And let me take a short. I took a short, very small size, like 2,000 shares, 3,000 shares. And all of a sudden, it jumps up a dollar. All of a sudden, it halts up $2. And now, in the blink of an eye, you know, this small scalp turned into me losing like six grand in like literally like two minutes. Like actually, like something, something so bizarre. And I'm thinking in my head now, like shit, you know, what am I going to do? Like I screwed this up. I knew it wasn't a short. I should have just followed my rule and said, you know, if the stock breaks above the previous day high, it's not a short. Why am I looking for trades? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? And then I thought to myself, shit, it's Monday. You know, this is typical Monday FOMO syndrome. You know, a rule of mine was to not trade the stock if it broke above Friday's high. And I got too confident. I got too cocky. I got too comfortable. You know, this year, uh, three months into the year, I'm up a million dollars. Last year, it took me all year to make a million dollars. So I'm doing very well on the year. And, you know, I could have played the cushion game and I could have said, you know what? Fuck this. I'm up so much money. I'm just going to add. I'm going to add. I'm going to add. But what I'm most proud of today, guys, is that I just took my loss like a man. You know, it doesn't matter if I lose $1,000. It doesn't matter if I lose $10,000. You know, it still hurts the same way. But I had to remind myself that the worst losses as traders come from when we are the most confident. You know, I'm at the, I was before today started, I was at the most confident I've ever been in my trading because I'm making fucking 50K a week. I'm making a million dollars in three months. You know, it's normal to feel confident. And I remember and I remind myself that the confidence is what leads to the most amount of losses, right? So rather than fighting today, I manage my risk. I gave myself a number. I said, I'm not allowed to lose more than $10,000 on this stock today, right? And the reason why I chose $10,000 is because that's pretty much my daily p and I make anywhere between five dollars to $10,000 a day. So I said, you know what? I'm not allowed to use more than 10. I'm not allowed to lose more than $10,000 today. And you know what? When it hit that number, I was like, that's it. I'm done for the day. You won. Good for you. Uh, you won the battle, but tomorrow I'm going to come win the war. And that's something that's very important in trading, guys. We need to remember that in trading, there's going to be certain things that we could do to make sure that our losses are kept under control. Because in trading, it does not matter how much money you make. I could teach someone, Bao could teach someone, James could teach someone how to make money every single day. The problem is that most people don't know how to keep that money in their pocket because they start gambling. So let me give you guys some advice that helps me and that we have kind of back tested that we know works. Number one is you need a max size on the day. It doesn't matter, you know, let's say the max size is a thousand shares, right? You need a max size at the broker level. So you need to call your broker and say, hey, I am not allowed to use more than a thousand shares on the day. And they are going to lock it so that no matter what you do, you are not allowed. Oh, shit, GameStop's going to 190. No matter what you do, you are not allowed to use more than that size. That's number one, max size at the broker level. Number two is max loss at the broker level. So let's say you make $100 a day or $200 a day. Go to your broker and tell them, I want you to lock me out whenever I'm minus $200 on the day. That way, you are not able to physically lose more than one of your day's work, which means that you'll be able to make it back the next day. The problems happen when you start to spiral. You know, whenever you're in a loss, you guys know that feeling. You guys know the feeling of being a deer in the headlights. You guys know the feeling of just, I'm going to wait it out. I'm going to wait it out. I'm going to add. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I've been there so many times and I've blown up so many fucking accounts by just waiting it out and losing all the money in my account. So now max loss at the broker level. So as long as you have a max position size at the broker level and a max loss at the broker level, there will be a ceiling to your losses every single day. You will not be able to pass that ceiling. And that'll make sure that you keep the money in your pocket. Because for example, if you make $100 a day, right? And you make $500 a week. 
and you let one $1,000 loss, right? You let a $1,000 loss kill you. Now you just lost two weeks of work. And most of the time, if the stock surpasses that max loss level that you have in your head that you have at the broker level, it's probably going to continue to fuck you up even more, right? You know how many times in my trading career that I said, if I just had a $10,000 max loss, this would change my life. You know how many times I've lost $50,000, $100,000, $200,000 in one day that if I just stopped at my $10,000 max loss, I would probably have another million dollars in my bank account. And that's something that I want you guys to understand before it's too late. So if you take one piece of advice from today's video, it is that you need to call up your broker and set a max size at the broker level and a max loss at the broker level to protect you. I have my max size and my max loss at the broker level. There is going to be a ceiling every single day that I cannot surpass if I get to those levels, right? And that is what's going to help you. And that's what's going to help me today, right? So yeah, it sucks. I lost $10,000. Eyes killed me. It went from like $8 to $15 in like two hours. And yeah, most of the time, like shit, uh, I'm going to make money on these setups, but the one or two times I don't make money, I don't want to lose a week's worth of work. I don't want to lose a month's worth of work. And I don't want to lose a year's worth of work. You know, what would have happened if I started to say, okay, fuck this. Instead of using 3,000 shares on eyes, I'm up a million dollars. I'm going to use 30,000 shares on eyes. I'm going to just keep adding to my loser. And then maybe I'm going to use 50,000 shares. Okay, what happens if the stock goes to 20? Now, all of a sudden, my $10,000 loss is a $200,000 loss. And I'm just like, what the fuck did I just do here, right? And all because of my ego, all because I'm not using a stop. You know, today I screwed up too, guys. Why did I trade the hot stock of the day? I was so confident. I am so confident in my trading now that I thought that I could go and slay the dragon myself. And Bao says it the best way. In all of these movies, the hero always gets slain by the dragon, right? So I don't want to be the guy that's fighting the dragon. I don't want to be that guy that's going after that. I want to be the guy that goes after the girl after the hero is dead. As soon as the hero is dead and the girl's all upset and she's alone, let me come in to swoop in for that, right? And that's what ANCN was today. That is what Tesla was today, right? So ANCN, guys, was a side stock of the day. So as eyes is taking attention, as eyes is taking attention, ANCN is the side stock. This is a stock that not a lot of people are looking at. This is a stock that not a lot of people care about. And to me, that is the best opportunity of the day because if 100 people are watching eyes, then 10 people are watching ANCN. There is less competition. There is more idiots. And that makes it easier for a guy like me to be able to win. So pre-market, if you go back in MIC chat, you can see that both Bao and I agreed that six fifty and seven dollars were the lines to short on ANCN. And let me give you a secret, guys. If Bao and I both agree on the same lines, nine out of ten times that trade is going to work, right? And that's kind of where the tab program started, right? Bao and I would share lines together. We would talk about which stocks we liked the best, and if a stock that we both agreed on had the same lines, we would both trade that with the most amount of size because that confirms both of our ideas. Whereas if he liked the stock that I didn't like and I liked the stock that he didn't like, meh, it doesn't fucking matter. But if we both agree on a stock, oh my God, that's the best one. So ANCN, you could see that as Eyes was getting attention, as Eyes was losing attention, this stock was going crazy. $6.50 and $7 hit perfectly. And right now the stock is trading at $5.27. So you could have made over a dollar a share had you just focused on that stock. So you focus on ANCN, you make your money here, you ignore eyes, you lose no money there, all of a sudden you make a shitload of money. And that was my mistake, guys. I went to slay the dragon. I was too confident. I was too cocky. And that just goes to show that we are all human. I am not perfect. There's going to be plenty of days I lose. I might fucking lose again tomorrow. But you better believe that I'm going to make sure that my losses are under control. And that's what gives me the edge in this market, right? And Tesla, Tesla was a trade out of the watch list. We wanted to go uh, long as soon as it broke above green, uh, anticipating a market bounce. And I was able to make like 10 or $20 a share, but I didn't really have any size because I was getting clocked on eyes. So this stock eyes took my attention, took my money, took everything. Whereas all the other side stocks, all the good stocks on day, I screwed up on. And you know what? It happens. I'm okay. You know, $10,000 loss sucks. 
Don't get me wrong, but you know it's manageable. I can make it back tomorrow, and that's what you guys need to understand. So set a max loss at the broker level, set a max size at the broker level. Come back to me a week later and tell me how much it changed your life. So do you guys have any questions on that? If this makes sense, leave a like on the video and let me know if you guys have any questions on that before I move on. And let me see what the fuck is going on with this GameStop. Okay. It's amazing to me that many people don't watch these videos. You know, we get like a thousand or two thousand views on these videos and it all blows my mind because we're basically giving you guys all the advice for free, yet all the pumpers, all the frauds, all the fakes are getting 10 times the amount of videos. And it just reminds me, guys, that there's so much dumb money out there. If you guys found this YouTube channel, if you guys found MIC, consider yourselves lucky uh, because eventually they're all going to come here. Eventually they're all going to want to learn. And the quicker and the faster you guys educate yourself, the less time there will be in between that there will be a learning curve, guys. So I'm proud of you guys for being in here. Even though we only have 300 live viewers, although this video is probably going to get like 2,000 views, I know of those 2,000 views, you guys are going to be successful. And, you know, we are here to help the masses. And that's going to take some time. But if we're even able to help one person put their max loss, one person set a max size on today's video, you know what? It's worth it, right? Uh, so let's talk about NFTs, right? So I've been getting so many questions about NFTs, right? It's like it's like the Bitcoin thing all over again. Should I buy Bitcoin? Should I buy Ethereum? What's the NFT? Should I buy it? So let's kind of talk about that very quickly. So what an NFT is, it's a non-fungible token, meaning it can't be replicated. So what that means is basically think of these as digital art or digital collectibles. So imagine instead of having the Mona Lisa framed as a physical photo, you own the Mona Lisa in digital uh, Bitcoin, crypto, world, code, whatever it is, right? And let me kind of explain why that was so important and what the hell happened and why this is so hyped up, right? Uh, so over, I think it was like last week or last month, uh, Logan Paul was uh, opening up a bunch of Pokemon cards, right? So apparently Pokemon is like the hottest thing in the world right now. And he had a Pokemon booster box that was worth a million dollars. And he was auctioning each one of the uh, packs inside the booster box for $30,000, right? And I'm not going to lie. Uh, I was a little bit under the influence of maybe some alcohol in Miami. And I had a really good week. And it turns out that all of a sudden, uh, I started bidding on these Pokemon cards and I told myself that the most I want to bid on these Pokemon cards is about $20,000. And it turns out that I won three packs for $33,000 each. And all of a sudden, I owed Logan Paul $100,000 with a $30,000 uh, auctioneer fee. And, you know, I thought about it for a second. I said, do I really want to spend hundred grand on Pokemon cards? And then I talked to Bao about it. And, you know, maybe we said, you know, we'll buy one of them and we'll do like a video and this and that. And... Long story short, uh, I decided not to get any of the Pokemon cards. Uh, I decided not to pay for it. I told him I'm broke. I told him I have no money. I told him, sorry, I can't pay for these $100,000 of Pokemon cards. And they got kind of pissed about it, but I just kind of like disappeared. Uh, so anyway, when Logan Paul opened up these Pokemon cards, he also was selling an NFT. Uh, he was selling an NFT for, uh, one, th or for one Ethereum. And at that time, the Ethereum was worth $2,000. So he sold about $3 million worth of NFTs in one day. And then the entire fucking world went crazy. Like, oh my God, NFTs, NFTs. This guy just created digital currency and from nothing, it cost him zero and he made millions of dollars, blah, blah, blah. And now everyone's talking about NFTs, right? And the way I think about it is like digital art. Do you want to buy art in the digital world? Do you want to do this and that? And to me, guys, I think this is a bubble. You know, I might be wrong. I don't really know what the hell is going on with this stuff, but I think it's going to be a bubble. I think that just like Pokemon cards and just like uh, baseball cards, you know, the Charizard is worth half a million dollars and every other Pokemon card is worth like $2. So in the NFT world of like art and all this bullshit, there's probably going to be a couple that are going to be worth 10, 20, 50, 100, a million dollars, but 99% of them are probably going to be worth trash. 
right? It's just like these altcoins in the crypto world. Bitcoin and Ethereum are the ones that people want to talk about. Ripple is fucking trash. Dogecoin is fucking trash. Everything else is fucking trash, right? And that's something that you have to keep in mind for these things. So when it comes to NFTs, I don't think you guys should believe the hype. I think that most of these things are going to be worth nothing. The 1% that are going to be worth a lot, I don't know what the hell is going to happen, right? I don't know what the hell is going to happen. Um, and I've been getting questions like, can you day trade these NFTs? Can I just buy a fucking piece of art and then sell it to some other fucking schmuck that wants it more? And the reality is, I don't know. I don't really care. It doesn't really matter to me. But if people are just messaging me about it, it reminds me that uh, the crypto craze is even crazier than ever. Uh, there's a lot of people that are believing the hype. And just like uh, the hype of Bitcoin and all these altcoins faded off and then came right back, maybe the hype of this is going to fade off. Maybe when the hype uh, fades off, there will be opportunities to buy these NFTs. But as of now, at the height of the hype, I don't think it's the time where you should, guys should be buying or caring about it. So that's just my two cents. I'm not a crypto expert. This is not investment advice. I'm pretty much half retarded, uh, but this is kind of what I think. And these are, this is because I've been getting so many DMs about it. And yeah, so we could talk about Pokemon cards. We could talk about anything. Uh, maybe I, really quickly, let me show you guys the invoice of these Pokemon cards. Let me find this really quick. Okay, guys, you guys want to see? Yep, not fun. That was not fun. <laughs> but yeah, that's what happens when I start drinking in Miami. I start bidding a hundred grand on Pokemon cards, and I ended up winning. <laughs> I had people like Tosh telling me, yo, buy it, buy it, buy it. You're going to make so much money if you buy these Pokemon cards. Motherfucker. So that's it, guys. Um, also, I guess now that you guys made it towards the end of the video, uh, we're running a special promo for MIC. So you get to get your half, uh, you get to get your first month half off. So it's going to cost you $97 to join. Uh, we're going to be running this promotion until the end of the week. So if you guys want access to this promo, if you guys want to get your first month half off at MIC, text Tosh at 213-458-5997, and he will hook you guys up with a link. Other than that, I think I'm going to wrap it up for today. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. But other than that, uh, I will see you guys later, and maybe I'll see these Pokemon cards in my nightmare. So. Have a good day, guys, and I will see you later.